Welcome back to Modern Homestead Alaska. In today's episode, we are going to turn this disaster of a drop zone at our front door into this. Welcome to Modern Homestead Alaska. We are Erin and Jessica Milnes. We are building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska with the help of three of our children. Our second son, Caleb, our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt, along with our three dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and the newest addition, Roberto. Let me just start off by talking you through why this needs to be changed so drastically. First of all, um, we can do the befores, we'll do the befores. The big red cabinet you see behind me goes right here in this blank spot. <clears throat> when, if all hopes and dreams have, have come to fruition, what has happened is a couple of things. Number one, I never knew what I wanted to do with this space. I had some ideas, I created a Pinterest board for it. All of that has flown out the window. Being here since July of 2021, so in 2022, it was a year, <clears throat> and then this being our second winter in Alaska, <sighs> Can I just tell you, like, it's so crazy. The amount of like coats and gear and just boots, the whole nine yards that we have has made this area impossible. And to say I hate it, I don't think it's strong. Like I loathe <laughs> this area of my house. Not because it was unattractive, but it's impossible to keep up on. So just starting out, telling you where we were at and kind of what happened, this red cabinet is never going anywhere. It was my great grandmother, so the kids' great, great grandmothers. And I love it. It has been all sorts of colors. I'm the one that painted it red so on and i'm just going to keep it the thing with not having a formal dining or a space for it to go this is the best spot for it in the house so it's just going to stay here not because it's perfect or ideal but because i love the piece and i'm not getting rid of it and it brings me joy not only that i store overflow like some special bowls and dishes and things that i don't want in our daily or weekly rotation, but I want them quick at hand. The other thing is, is that this table, this entry table, we brought from Arizona because you could take it apart and bring it, and we didn't know what we were going to do and it fit in the trailer. It has never been the right style for how we did this house. So with it being a flat surface, not that there won't be another flat surface here, with it being a flat surface, it does nothing but collect junk. Everything that's in everyone's hands when they walk in gets dropped there. And the reason it gets dropped there is because then they're trying to take off boots and shoes and not track the mud, the dirt, the sand, the snow, the salt, all of that through the whole house. So this flat surface needs to go away. That's kind of where we're starting out. Let me get this cleaned up. We have a plan. I will say after completing this that it didn't require a very high skill level, sorry, to do a project like this, but I'll walk you through the steps. I did end up moving that rug to the basement and got a new one. And I started by just clearing, taking down everything. I spent several minutes trying to find a stud before I realized that this wall actually has sheeting. So the whole thing has wood underneath the drywall so I can screw in the screws and nail in the nails anywhere I want. I measured it out. The height I chose is based off of our longest piece of winter clothing, which is Aaron's coveralls. I chose to do seven foot because of where the red cabinet is going to go. And all I needed to do was cut the top and bottom trims are one by four and then the center pieces are one by threes. 
I do use the level and make sure not only do I nail each one of the boards in, I use a couple of screws, especially in the top one because it's going to get hooks later. You certainly can glue these. I've seen a lot of people glue them. I just didn't feel that it was necessary. So I just simply tack nailed them in and put a couple of screws in each board. I do have equal measurements for the center ones in order to leave space for coats. Then I moved on to the caulking and I really do feel like it's such a big part and doing this really well. And then I came back later after having done it and done the primer and so on, I actually made sure and touched up Afterwards, I don't normally have to sand, but because the wood itself is a finished wood, I do sand it down to make sure that it is smooth. And then black likes to show flaws. So if you are painting yours black, it is a little more important that you pay really good attention to what you do as far as all of that goes. I began painting the door it's not always the easiest painting project on the door. It is a metal door. I talk about that later in the video. I just use a brush and get the primer into all the cracks and crevices, and then I roll it out from there. This is primer. I convinced the girl Home Depot doesn't normally tint primer at all. But if you ask nicely and you can get them to put a little bit of black in the primer as opposed to using white, it does make painting something black later a whole lot easier. Or if you are doing red, if you do a gray primer under red, you do a lot less coats of paint. I was trying to be a little bit budget conscious on the paints that I chose and I really wish I would have done a little higher quality paint, but Home Depot just has this black paint already mixed up and I just went with it. I, for a door, would have probably chosen to do a little bit better quality paint, but it ended up fine. I'm totally good with where we're at with all of it, it's like I say several more times, it's just paint moving forward at the end of the day and we can always paint over it. All right, <laughs> that's it for day one. Um, I did have a moment where I felt a little bit panicky, right? Like, ah! And then I trusted that I had a design in, op in mind. And then we're gonna come back tomorrow and I'm gonna tell you, this already has the two coats on it. When you're painting drywall, you can do a second coat when it's just barely dry. This door is metal, so it was primed when we bought the house. I've hated this door. I never would have chosen this, and I don't know why Aaron and I didn't pay like a thousand dollars in the big scheme of things to put a door in that I loved before we had the whole house sighted and whatever, but it doesn't matter. Um, it's just paint. It's no big deal, but it's metal. I primed it twice. So two coats of primer on the metal door, let it dry. I'm going to let the black, this first coat dry completely overnight. 
because what happens with metal is if you come through and this is not completely dry, it will pick up the other paint. And we really, really don't want to do that. It would just cause the best. So the inside is painted black and then the trim, I have white paint and we'll do all of the touch up for the white trim tomorrow. And then we're gonna pull this together in this second half of the video. But now that the second coat is on here, I actually love it. I keep looking at the camera and think that looks small. That is seven foot long and over six foot tall. <laughs> it is big, like it's a big space when it all gets pulled together. We'll get the rug back, we'll do all that. So stick it, stick with me, here we go, tomorrow. We are back for day two of this project. Let's just get it nailed out and finished today. I'm gonna just right away get the second coat on the door and then look for any touch-ups that might need to be on this wall. So those can start drying and then we will do the corrective paint on the white and my wall color is Agreeable Gray by Sher Sherwin-Williams. And so we're gonna do some touch-up around it. My goal today, because I want to do touch-up throughout this whole space, is to get to this corner. I took the coats down this morning. Get to that corner and then get this entire wall to the bedroom and then kind of imagine it, that'll be a section for next week, and then the kitchen after that. Just do some touch-ups around the sink and things like that. So let's just get right into it. For each one of the hooks that go over the center pieces of wood, I measure out the center of those and then the center of the top trim and add in the hooks. But I also forgot to mention, or I didn't show it, there is a one by one piece of trim on the top so that it kind of mimics what the door is and you can't really see it on camera, but in person, that extra trim piece was definitely needed. So I'm glad that we did that. So that I don't have to tape off the window, I just use a razor blade to clean up any of the additional paint and it does such a good job. So this is a super upsetting $115, had no clue. This is one gallon of paint. Cody got a couple of buckets, but the paint alone was almost $90 at Sherwin-Williams. So the whole house is painted in this brand, this sheen, and this color. We had some five gallon buckets left over and I've used them to do touch up over the last year. And when we opened them today, it was, you could not even mix it. It was solid, hard, ruined. So I just was like, oh, go get just one gallon of paint, Cody. But it needed so that I'm not painting whole walls. It needs to be the same but I had no idea, $90 for a gallon of paint. So this is not a normal cost for like Home Depot or whatever, but let's finish. We just have touch up where we made mistakes and then we're gonna pull this room together. Well, to make paint matters worse, and you're going to see it in the finished product, and I will fix that next week with the other projects, we used what the painters had as a tag, and it is the wrong sheen right color. 
So we are done. So the paint's done. The section is done. And now we need to pull it all together. While the touch-up paint that I just finished, like when I was scraping around the window, I nicked a couple of little spots. So I just repaired all of that, fixed everything, and then I'm gonna just let it dry really well so that I can sweep and mop the floor before we put the rug down. While I do that, I'm gonna clean the rest of this before Aaron gets home, and then I'll bring you right back for pulling it together. I got this unique bench at one of just the local kind of thrift shops, if you will, here in Wasilla. And what I was hoping to accomplish is a place to sit, to put on shoes, take off shoes, so that everyone stops stepping off of the rug in order to use like the chairs in the dining area. I also got these three baskets. What I'm trying to eliminate is everyone just dropping all the hats and gloves and different things that they bring into the house. And then Wyatt and I are going to move back into this space, my great grandmother's cabinet. And I think it works well together. Not only did I go with the same plaid rug because these are some of the cheapest rugs you can get, but I really like the look of it with the house. Um, it's an indoor outdoor rug and they clean up. The last one lasted over a year. This other heavy rubber mat, same sort of thing. I like the way that it looks, but I did get a different mat that you can put your boots in. Well, <laughs> tell me in the comment section what you think. Let's take a look and then I'm going to tell you honestly how I'm feeling about it. Honestly, it turned out good. I am, I am good with it. I'm gonna live with it for a little while. And maybe some of you are a little more blown away at the difference than I am. And part of it for me though, because I have been watching so much Clutterbug today while I was finishing the project, couple of things. I had a panic last night that I had painted the door black and I had to just tell myself it's only paint. I've said that a hundred times over everything. I have painted the house wrong colors before. I've messed up on paint a million times. Not a big deal. I can always just paint over it. The other thing I thought is if I wanted to extend this black faux Wayne's coating and move this someplace else. I know how I built this and it was so simple to build with a good caulking. I could seam it together and I could build it for as long as I wanted in the room. What my struggle is, is my um, design style, which would be misleading because the whole kitchen is open shelving. You can see everything is ideally for me, everything, coats wouldn't even exist, I guess would be the best way of saying it, is in Arizona, we had a coat closet, it had sporting goods and stuff in it, but every coat closet we've ever owned, I'm back. I was saying every coat closet we've ever owned is such a disaster. No one, no one in my family hangs up their coats. And I think it's just an instance of you walk in the door, you're dropping things like I've said before in the video, 
you're trying to take off muddy or dirty or dusty boots or shoes or whatever, you just drop things, you set things down. They are not people, nor am I, it's not my natural personality to take a coat off, put it on a hanger, hang it up, put it in the closet, have all of that neat and tidy. So when the house was originally designed, there was a coat closet here, but the shower was so tiny in the master bathroom that Heron couldn't turn around in it. So we stole this closet in order to have a shower. Well, now everything is exposed, but this would be like what Cass from Clutterbug calls is like a butterfly's way of doing things, which is really, really great for children, um, putting hooks everywhere, clear baskets, places for all of it to go, where it's just as easy for them to put it away as it is for them to leave it out. And that I think is my struggle. This is not ideal for how I would like the design of the house, but I do think now that I've said all of that, it is an excellent choice for how we actually live. And that is my encouragement. When you're doing crazy things to your home, organizing, cleaning projects, making decisions, my theme in life is just do what you're already doing naturally, but try and make it a little bit more beautiful, a little easier to clean, a little easier to put back together, a little less stuff, but have a system that is simple to for everyone <laughs> in your house to keep up on. So tell me what you think. It could be that it's so different, that it's such a shocking, change for me like in the house but i think it looks really great in the house and i'll show you that as we continue to go along and what have you but tell me what your with thoughts are. that thank you that those of you that have stuck around to the end if you're new around here hit that subscribe button ring the bell you'll get notification thumbs up and comments help our channel to grow but i really am interested in hearing you guys's opinion on how this area at our front door turned 